Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Cameron. And we are here here today to teach you Turn the Tide, an interesting sort of trick-taking card game that will be available on Board Game Arena during Momocon Let's Get Digital Weekend. Awesome, yeah. The name of the game really is Will You Sink or Will You Be Able to Turn the Tide and Stay Afloat? Yes, it's all about water, uh, water metaphors and sheep for some reason. <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to show you how to play. Okay, so Turn the Tide uh, can play from between three and six players, and it's literally about trying not to drown. Uh, it's an important life lesson. Very important life lesson. So uh, the game involves a deck of cards numbered one through 60 over here, and depending on the number, there may be a life preserver or half of a life preserver on each card. So when the game begins, uh, we shuffle the deck of 60 cards and we deal 12 out to each player. Even if there's not uh, enough players for all the cards to get dealt out, dealt out, you only play with 12 cards per player. And those hands are going to be the same throughout the game, round to round. They're just going to transfer possession. Basically, we're going to pass our entire hands around so everyone will play each hand once. So if I do that real quick. And clearly, on Board Game Arena, all this is done for you. So, initially, everyone's gonna look at their hand of cards and count up the number of life preservers they have total at the top of each card. And then take that many, uh, rounding down where appropriate. So if you have two half preservers, that counts as one. That's a little bit different than Board Game Arena. I have four. I believe that's randomly assigned in board game arena, or is it the same thing? Yeah, no, they it, oh, really. Yeah. Oh. Basically, the the life preservers are a measure of how strong or weak your hand is. It's six and a half. What does that mean? You take six. Okay. Take four. And we'll explain why certain cards have have life preservers and which one, why they don't. As we go. So the goal of each round of the game is to not drown. And obviously, with life preservers, they help you not drown. There is a set of 24 tide cards, uh, two sets of 1 through 12 that we'll be playing through. So basically, a hand of this game is 12 tricks, although they're technically not tricks. They're just turns in the game. So we are going to, each turn of the round, we're going to deal out two tide cards. Now, everyone is going to choose one of the cards in their hand. Uh, what was the range again of numbers? Uh, 1 through 12. No, no, as in... The oh, 1 through 60. 1 through 60. Yeah. So everyone's going to take a card from their hand and play it face down in front of them, and then we all simultaneously reveal. The goal is to try and not have the highest tide at the end of each turn. Now, if you have no tide card in front of you, you have a tide level of 0. But at the end of this, one of us is going to take that 3, and one of us is going to take that 2. So let's see. Okay, so we all played our card and we all reveal. So now, whoever played the highest valued card will take the smaller or the lower of the two tied cards. So I played a 52, I will take the two. And then whoever played the second highest card takes the remaining tied card. Cameron is demonstrating what it means to unsuccessfully try not to drown. Yeah, so you're going to take the card you played and set it aside, but keep it near you. So now, at the end of a turn, we resolve who has the highest tide, highest tide card. I said highest tide card. <laughs> uh, that'd be Cameron. So he's going to use up a life preserver to stay afloat. Because I'm drowning in neck deep water. Okay. We then take that another turn. That sheep is standing in the water and you're drowning. I yep. know, this is a shame. So now we have an 11 and a 5. Now, depending on who ends up taking those cards, uh, it could be Cameron again, it could be Jess, and it, or it could be me. But anytime you take a tied card, it replaces, you know, covers up a previous tied card that you've, that you've collected. So no one wants the 11, so I think people are going to try and play low. But you may not have that ability. 
We'll see what happens. All right. So you play the 39, so you take the 5. I play the next highest card, so I take the 11. Yep. I so now spell. I have the highest tied card, so I use the a life preserver. And so we're going to continue doing that. Uh, you t uh, sorry, I turned those down. You want to keep the life preservers out because you're going to pass those along with your hand to the next player for the next round. So anyway, we continue playing until we go through the entire uh, deck of 24 tied cards. Something important to note. If you would be required to uh, flip over a life preserver, but you have run out, you drown. You set your hand down, and you are out for the remainder of that hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Exactly. At the end of the round, everyone scores points equal to the number of life preservers they have remaining. If you have the highest, or if you have the lowest, or are tied for the lowest tied card in front of you, you gain an extra bonus point. If you drowned, then you lose a point. You can have negative one for that round. At the end of the round, you gather back all the cards in your hand and your life preservers, and you pass them to the player on your left. Are the ones that are already expended still expended? No, they reset. Okay. So basically, everyone has an opportunity to play the same exact hand once. But the order in which the tide card comes out makes a big difference in how you play those hands. So you may be wondering, what determines why some people get a lot of life preservers and others do not? Well, the cards near the center of the 1 to 60 range have the entire life preservers. The ones further out have half life preservers. And the cards at the very bottom and the very top of the range of 1 to 60 have no life preservers. The reason for that is because if you have cards coming out tide cards coming out that you want or you want to avoid, it's much easier to do that with high cards and low cards. The cards near the middle are a little more shaky in terms of what they'll be able to take or avoid. So the hands that are generally weaker have more life preservers, so it's harder, it's a kind of a, a balance for them because they're more likely to take uh, tide cards they don't want. So anyway, that's literally the game. You play as many rounds as the number of players because everyone plays each hand once. And then at the end, you add up the scores and whoever has the most points wins. Simple enough. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, but the agony of trying to stay afloat is so delicious, it's really fun. And we can play this on Board Game Arena? You can play this on Board Game Arena and it plays from three to, I believe you can play it with six players. You just play with fewer tied cards because you only have 10 cards in your hand. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can play this anytime on Board Game Arena, and you can find us at uh, the Momocon Board Game Arena group, and you can uh, meet us on our Discord for the Let's Get Digital weekend, where there'll be plenty of uh, volunteers and staff willing to teach you this and other games on Board Game Arena, and we can all get together and have a good time.